All right, everybody. Here we are live with Neve. It is a beautiful day. It is 1023. Month is almost over. We're waiting on the presidential election. Everybody's heard enough about that the past week or two. So I think that we'll just uh, avoid that topic. Hopefully, if whoever you are and wherever you are, your candidate that you choose will win and you'll be happy. And if you're not happy, well, um, damn, I hate this thing. <laughs> Gotta move my chair. At any rate, <clears throat> uh, it is foggy here in New York. I don't see anything but fog. Can't see the city. Hell, I can't even see the bridge. That confounded bridge is gone. Uh, we have a great guest today. We have John Spear. He's joining us from Florida shortly. Uh, John is a, he investigates poltergeists, ghosts, paranormal activity. Uh, he's had some uh, measure of uh, good luck with uh, demonology. Uh, he apparently uh, has the ability to chase the spell away from a demonized child, for example. Uh, I'm not sure how he could help me. Um, perhaps, uh, I don't know, he'd get my hair to grow in better. I'm kidding. He, um, he's been out. He's had, uh, I have several uh, video clips that we'll be running, and it's an interesting thing. I'm, I'm here to ask him how he got started. Uh, what he, uh, I have some stuff from last week that he uh, most recently worked on, and I think he'd uh, really like to, to hear that. Um, so, so Pete, you can you hear me? Nod your head if you can. No, apparently Pete's not yet on the feed. John. So, on the right here, uh, if you have any comments, questions, or anything like that, I'd love to hear them. Uh, you know, we we are making some drastic changes to the program, and today's uh, event is uh, no different. So, I'm going to have to sit here and entertain you guys for a little bit. So, ha what would it be today? Uh, cheap party tricks. Um, I have a ball that I can balance on my nose. Uh, let's just talk about Halloween. Can you hear me? Right now, Halloween's about a week away. Uh, it's right before the election. So, it's a, a particularly spooky uh, year. And there's... I, I, one thing I've noticed with the election this year, I haven't heard crap about any of the creepy clowns out there roaming around lurking in the park. Um, I was going to dress up as one and run across the field at the uh, Highlands Film Fest, but it was a little cold that night, and I couldn't get my nose attached. But uh, I think I'll try it again next time. About three years ago, I did a show with the lovely uh, Velva Harity down in Pinellas Park, Florida. Excuse me, not Pinellas, St. Petersburg, brain fart. And um, we talked about ghosts, and uh, she's a certified union therapist, so we talked, uh, she handled all the uh, heavy lifting in it, and I was there for comedic support. Um, I'm of the mind that creepy clowns terrify people, because uh, some people just hate clowns. Uh, it's, it's depending, I mean, we have the images of John Wayne Gacy, we have so many things like that. And um, it was quite an, inter it was a good interview, so if you're interested in it, it is available on Velva Harity's website. She does a lot of good work, and her page is fun. So check it out and give a listen. Um, also, if you're in the St. Petersburg, Florida area, go ahead and uh, get uh, Belinda Davis Galleries. Give her a call. Uh, she's a great painter, and she does all things Florida very well. Uh, in the next week or two, too, I'm going to be showing you some shots of one of our local photographers who's done lots of shots of me. Um, I've been working with Nancy for at least five years now, I think. <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, she gets the right shot because if she can make me look good on film, she can make anybody look great. Uh, she has a great eye. She has a wonderful sense of humor. And she's just a joy to work with. Um, energetic, talented, and most importantly, talented. Did I say talented? Yes, I did. Um, great person, great human being, and... Um, I have some work of hers that I'll be showing you. Um, probably next week we'll be showing that. Uh, so anybody in the Asbury Park or Metro New York area, if you have a rock and roll band and you want somebody to take your picture and make it look damn good, better than you could expect, check out Nancy Kravis Photography. She is um, just a wonderful human being. And if she, like I said, if she can make me look good, make anybody look good. Uh, 
Let's see what else. I don't know if you can hear the foghorn blowing. Uh, it's incredibly beautiful it? today. Um, just foggy. I can't see the bridge. I can barely see a car driving over it right now. Um, it's cool. Uh, I'm enjoying it very much. And um, that's all I got to say. So, Julie, uh, can you hear us on the show? I can hear you fine. Can you hear me? Is that a yes? yes. If you want to join us, Jules, me? come on on. Can you hear me? I don't hear you yet. Hang on. Okay, I'm going to bring Jewel Tate on. She's coming any minute. At any rate, uh, I hear Hello, very nice little other than the foghorn every few minutes. And I know those of you who are watching are wondering, what? This show's kind of rambling, man. Oh, I'm getting a call, and it's a prank call. Should I take it? No. Nope. Don't think so. Oh, and somebody wants to give me a job as a quality, is it a quality agent job? I'm more in line for a Secret Service type of job. Can you hear um, me now? I still can't hear you, Julie. Are you, but that's all right. I'm listening, and uh, we'll have you on in just a minute. I can hear Neil. I'm trying to get into my John, own personal John, Facebook hear, page right John, now. I can you see hear, how this uh, is um, you going. Talk to Neil. Talk to Neil. It uh, isn't going so good because I can't tell if it's going out to YouTube. Neil, I can uh, hear you. I'm recent. Let's see if I can see myself. Appreciate you guys standing by with us. You know the show has been kind of – we have a great reputational for technical. My friend Rick Davis will appreciate this. I'm not going to say it. I was going to say technical rhymes with buggery. <laughs> Any rate, for those of you who are pondering that, grab the dictionary. It'll be great fun. Um. Again, I'm trying to watch myself to see if I'm on Facebook, and I can't tell. Uh, John, speak. I can hear you, Neil. I could hear him. I don't hear him now, though. Keep talking. I can hear Neil, but um, I can't hear you. Let me see. Talking about the Halloween and the creepy clown thing, getting back on point, there have been – I have not seen anything on television about creepy clowns or them uh, – oh, my God, we had a, a – Johnny jumped in for a second there. That was cool. He's uh, you can't see him on Johnny and Julie, take take a breath and just be cool. I know you guys are working hard. So I, I have to give a great thanks to our producer, Jewel Tate. She's uh, she's struggling mightily. Fighting. I think, we're, actually, you know what's happening? Uh, our guest, the paranormal guy, is coming on. And I think we're being I, – I think there's, like, demonic possession of the microphone. I'm not sure what's going on, but we're having – Weird technical problems. I don't know. Johnny, can you hear me out there? I, I think they're screwing with me because we're doing the show today. I mean, t seriously. I can you hear you. Time. I know you can't talk to me because I can't hear you yet. But um, this is one example of comedy technique where you talk to yourself and read back the audience or your interviewee's response. As it is, all you can do is smile. And I can tell you're there and still working. And Julie's got that look on her face of like more of that random buggery or rhymes with buggery. Excuse me. I am doing my best to clean up my language here. My one of my good friends um, and uh, just all around great guy, Rick Davis. I'm sure if he's watching, he'll be getting a good chuckle today. He was telling me he's part of the charm of our show is how uh, I've sometimes for example, one of my best bits that I did was a few months ago, and I was discussing an album that I'd produced in Tampa, Florida called Across Tampa Bay. And I was sitting here, and I had it plugged in. My laptop was brand new at that point. I didn't quite know how it operated. So I pop on a CD that I produced. It's got about 30 songs, 20 songs, something like that. And I start playing them. <clears throat> some of these songs I played on, some of them I wrote or helped write, some of them I produced, and a bunch of them were just some great artists in Tampa Bay. There's too many to name right now. We, we'll do a whole show about it. But as I'm going through the songs, I'm sitting here, and I'm like, I'm totally grooving. And I'm singing, yeah, baby, she came in through the bathroom window. Ba -da -dum -ba -dum. And there's no music playing in the background. So all they had was my, um, my, just my deranged babbling and trying to sing probably out of key because uh, <laughs> they didn't hear it. So I do this for at least six or seven songs. And 
um, at that point, somebody on the screen catches my eye and they say, hey, dummy, you don't have any music. We can't hear it, but we sure like watching you bop around. And so here I am bumbling through the show. And then I try to figure out what's going on. I have to go off camera. And all I can say is that um, <laughs> we're going to be adding all this stuff to the YouTube page. Uh, anybody who's watching today's rather disjointed show, you will be seeing all of our episodes on Live with Neve on YouTube. Uh, if you, it's L I V E W I T H N E V E, and yes, that stands for my name. Uh, the whole name is Neil Ernest Van Erdy. Don't you forget it? That's right. Don't forget about it. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Do you hear me now? Um. Yeah. Hello. Okay. So we've talked ghosts. Um, Talk to Julie. Can you hear me? Can you hear as far me? as elections go, I don't know what to say other than I hope everybody watching does get their uh, their choice. Um, it's a personal decision. I, I think most people have their minds made up by now. I, I, I would be amazed in this polarized atmosphere if anybody hasn't made up their mind and or voted yet. So we'll see what happens right now. Um, we're getting ready and uh, we're going to have. Uh, Johnny Spear back again on Halloween night. <laughs> we'll also be talking to him live that night, and I'll, I'll be running some video from his work. Uh, I also have uh, our theme for Halloween this year is Frank Zappa, the musical tra uh, tradition that he had of playing shows on Halloween night in the New York area. They're fantastic shows over many years, and many of the tribute bands in the States and I, I'm talking bands that have members of Frank Zappa's band in them. Um, of course, Dweezil Zappa's kind of got that pinnacle position because he's, he's Dweezil. However, uh, there's many, there's, there's four that I'm aware of that are really good. Uh, one led in Tampa, St. Pete area is by the great Jerry Outlaw. Jerry, if you're out there, as always, uh, I, I'm always respectful and in awe of your playing and your, uh, Hell, I just like recording with you. You're a good hang in the studio, and uh, hopefully we'll be doing some more of that soon. Uh, Jerry Elba leads Bogus Pump, which has played in Tampa for decades. Uh, they've always had an amazing Halloween show. Uh, on, next week, I'm going to be talking to all the members of Project Object, which is run by Andre Chumley. He's uh, been a tech for everybody in the world, from a, uh, Adrian Ballou to uh, Albi Miola, uh, he's a tech for Yes. Uh, he takes care of all of their guitar tech stuff. Brilliant player, brilliant guy, really a smart dude. His band Project Object has several members uh, of Frank Zappa's touring band. I will also be speaking to the uh, venerable Ike Willis, who is a member of Frank's band for many, uh, Joe's Garage, that whole period. Uh, he will be on with us. I have Scott Throne of the band Ugly Radio Rebellion. Uh, all of the bands I've mentioned have played with Ike, so it's a it's a small yes, yes. community of people who dig Frank Zappa and get his music and understand it. Um, I have a very good friend of mine who knows music inside out, and it was an interesting conversation we had. He said, I've just never been able to get Frank Zappa. And I said, um, well, okay. Uh, had Can you hear me? And he told me. His experience was he listened to him twice. I can hear you. Reason really. at the time. You know, we all can like, Neil? like and we don't like what we I can hear Neil. Like. Great. Uh, okay, so let's see if we can get Neil to hear you. He listened to these two songs, never really heard it. Yeah. Well, it's interesting I'm to me. I know all about something he has and coming. And, um, we talk about jazz uh, a lot. Uh, he's a uh, fifth of many others and many other great. Um, he knows his music is what I'm going to say, but. Uh, I'm hoping to try and wean him slowly into our Neil. Pool. Neil, can you hear me? Neil, 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 yeah. Neil, 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 Neil. Test um, one, two. Neil, 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 Neil. It, Test it, one, it two. Does, Neil, uh, Neil. You'll Neil, see. Neil, Neil, can you hear me? I'm trying Neil. to look at three screens. We're trying to take care of a few things today, and Neil, so Neil, can you hear me? We're can having. You? This is our first live transmission, and I'm not putting any pressure on Julie or anybody else. We're working to make this happen. Um, Going forward, this Neil, show can you hear every Friday at 10 a.m. And everything that happens on this show will then go on the Live with Neve YouTube channel. So if you're a fan of mine, please uh, go to Live with Neve, sign up, like, friend, and share. And if you can, subscribe. 
Uh, I'm trying to get, I have 4,500 fans. So if just half of you guys will sign up and subscribe, I'll be able to offer a higher level of production for you guys. The show will get better. Uh, right now, we, we've yeah. invested in new infrastructure, which you're watching. <clears throat> this technology is allowing our me right now being streamed up to a server, and it's being sent out to all of you guys. Um, if you've watched in the past, we've had technical issues with Facebook dropping out. This won't happen anymore, and I know today has gotten a little unorthodox stop, but the, the bottom line is everybody asks, well, why do you do this? Okay, so I'll tell you. COVID hit. I've been in recovery from uh, a bad accident uh, almost two years ago, and I've had to kind of reinvent my life due to various issues, which I don't need to go into, and I decided to just start doing a, a basic uh, video podcast talking to musicians, comedians, uh, artists, photographers, anybody that I think is cool and has some kind of positive thing going on. Um, I take show ideas. If anybody wants to call in and has an interesting show idea, or if you want to be on the show, uh, just hit us. Uh, you know where to find us. We're right here on any of the sites you may be watching. Uh, uh, you can reach me at nvanerdy uh, at me.com. So, again, it's nvanerdy at me.com. And we've also got, um, let's see, we're on Facebook. We're on my band's pages. So anywhere that you see this, um, it's being streamed instantly. Uh, we're, we're just new and getting used to it. So there's a few changes. But the one thing you will have fixed, um, the show will now be able to have 10 guests on at the same time. We'll also be able to have uh, phone-ins. Uh, we can run video during the show. If I'm talking to a guest, rather than saying we'll put it into post-production, now I can just sit and run this on a screen. I'll go over to the right, and you'll see me, and you'll see the bands I'm interviewing right here. Uh, for example, uh, I'm sitting right now in Red Rocks, Colorado. Um, if Neil, you can you that, hear me? Really great. Can you oh, hear yeah. me? Where Neil, you at? Can you hear me? Yeah, you can you, can you, you hear me? You. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello, hello. Can and you I'm hear me? You Can you hear me? Yes or I think no? We're definitely post poltergeist activity because this thing's just messing with us. But that's okay. Can you hear yeah, we've got me? The phone who can help us out, hopefully. And uh, as far as all this stuff, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, it's can, can, you hear, can you hear? Can you hear John? Can and, you hear John? Uh, a lot of times in the past week. I've been getting this to the point, and we have to consider this a win because it's going to all six of my pages simultaneously. And um, it's doing it in real time. And when the show's over, you'll be able to go and watch this forever. I'm sure this is going to be a highlight of your season. And you know what? For Halloween, I'm going to give you a special live recording of me playing with the Shake Society in Tampa. Anybody who signs up, subscribes to the YouTube page gets that. And depending on what kind of donations you make to the Live with Neve page, you can kind of do your donation based on making me perform some uh, stupid human trick on, on camera. Or if, the, if it's a high enough uh, donation to my Patreon page, you never know what I might do. You just have to kind of ask. And sadly, I can see my producer in the background shaking her head going, oh, no. This is going to degrade into some sort of uh, abominable adventure that. Can you hear out. me? Can you hear me? You're on here, Jules. Can you hear me? 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 I'm very good at reading lips. Can you? Can you? How about we do a ripple? Everybody out there, yes. And. You know, it was funny when I was in the hospital. I was on a bunch of medication, and it was terrible because a friend came to visit me. I can hear you. Too. You're not hear me. Anyway, I was sitting there, um, and I was mixing. Uh, I was sitting. You know, they have you in a bed with the rails up, and I was on all kinds of medication. And my friend came to visit me, and I was sitting there, just oh, with me, and I was moving faders <laughs> to my right. I'm looking out the window. He came in from behind me. John, does there anything that says uh, stop cam mute or uh, cam mic on your screen? Nearly. Yeah. Okay, make sure they're all on where it's all white because they're not yellowed out or crossed out. I'm sitting there and I'm mixing away. Yeah. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, Mike is a, on oh, camera. Oh, yeah, it's fucking killer. Great. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm so sorry, guys. I can hear so, you, yeah, and I can hear Neil. Right 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 he can't hear, he some, can't hear us, so word. it's on his um, end. Overlay over my bad, bad word. Um, I am trying to up our game right here. Before I get a little over enthusiastic. Right you do this um, delay. I, Sometimes that happens. Yeah, we'll probably do that. Why don't Why don't we? Uh, um, uh, we'll give you a call back after the show. Okay. Be offensive about some things, but that's a topic for another show. Um, okay. I'll, 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 Okay, um, we'll, we'll we'll call you after the show, okay? Um, okay, I'll talk to you I'll later. Have, uh, okay, see. thanks, bye. Oh shoot, I'm having a brain fart. Jennifer Cordy, excuse me. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, it's early, and I'm still working on my tea. Uh, Jennifer Cordy is a wonderful photographer and one of the uh, country, if not the world's, experts on time lapse photography and uh, not time lapse, but shooting. Um, long exposures. Um, I hired her once back about four or five years ago to do a shot for my band and we drove up to the Adirondacks and by the time we went out to shoot we were waiting for the Big Dipper to come up over the horizon and um, we're out there and we were out shooting in the middle of the night till three or four in the morning and it was cold. It was like you have to stand and hold still. Right? Can you hear me? When you're holding still, if you yeah, move, yeah. You, it ruins the shot. You have this long exposure of yourself sneezing. I don't hear you yet, but I'm watching you. Can't hear me. A new stalker song. How about that? Can't hear me. Um, Can't hear me? Try unplugging the mic you're using. Just see if the computer works. I don't know. Yeah, We're having I that. Sorry, I'm here again. Sort of like what I, I, Julie, think of yourself as um, a mime. Uh, Rush Limbaugh had his guy both snurdly, but you're the mime version. We had to do that. We had to get a mime for disability regulations. Um, and so Julie's going to go ahead and mime for the camera right now. Oh, how about this? I'll do it. What am wait, I? Wait, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can't hear you, hon. I'm sorry. Seriously. Um, if you can, can our fans see you, Julie? Because this is fun. No idea. Now you, you can see if, right now, guys. If I could, I can terrorize Julie. But I, I'll just stop and I'll, I'll act like I'm talking, and she'll be looking at me like. What's up? I can't hear them. And then now she get this puzzled look and be like, "Is he on? Is something?" Is something flummoxed? I'm going to use the word flummox every time I think of something that's hooked. Now that, I did pass that by the censors. Remember, everybody needs to be fooked sometime. I don't know what that really means, but you can use your imagination. In fact, anybody who replies on my YouTube page, I can't see if you guys are on or not. Um, I hope you are. <laughs> and I'll find out. The good fun about this is, uh, I don't know when – I won't be able to hear any of this until I get off the air. So um, I'm trying – like I said, it's um, pretty funny for me just sitting here unable to – there's live with me. I'm going to go to the page, and we're going to go to – oh, I do see myself. Um, gosh, this is interesting for me. I want to see if I can get – all right. Any of my friends, oh, you get the feedback, Jules? My local friends. If any of you guys are watching this, um, go ahead. Anybody on on you on Facebook, rather, if you're on there, uh, make a comment if you can hear us. Uh, it would really be good. We're, we are testing out all this gear. And at least now I can see um, what what's happening here. Um, as of now, we have zero people watching, which I understand. <laughs> this is pretty painful and tedious. But rather than uh, just waste the time sitting here, we're trying to fix a few things. Uh, again, if you'll notice behind me, 
there's what we call in the business a green screen. And I've got this wonderful photographer uh, photograph behind me of Red Rocks. Red Rocks, it was great. I was working out in Denver for about a year <laughs> on and off, and I had a day off. And I drove my dumb ass up to Red Rocks, ran down the center aisle, and uh, sang from the stage to the wonderful ambient echo of that place. It's just one of the most fantastic places to play music in the world. Uh, I'd love to play there. Uh, it's just a great venue, and it's an amazing thing to stand where even, like just thinking about the Beatles and so many great bands, you too. I mean, it is truly a venue that will probably outlast any of us here. And uh, barring any nuclear holocaust or things like that, it's certainly built to last. Someday they'll find it and they'll, it'll be like us looking at a Roman Colosseum uh, centuries later. Um, I have some great pictures, which I'll use uh, from when I was in Rome for a backdrop sometime. Uh, because the Colosseum it looks great in pictures, I can tell you it looks a lot better in person. And it's just remarkable what they did back then. Um, and as far as parallels to society, I suggest um, Will and Ariel Durant's The History of Civilization. Uh, you can read in there about different time periods of history. And, um, you'll, it's, it's a good read. Anyhow, uh, I don't see anybody posting. And I, and I know that we're up, but I also know that on Friday, sometimes people are busy. They don't have time to do stuff. We've had some great people on lately. Uh, it's just, I'm very lucky that the number of people who've said yes to doing an interview. I will also tell you that we have some real um, interesting interviews coming up. Um, I'm sorry, I'm reading a message. Uh, we have some great interviews coming up, which are in negotiation, which I won't tell you other than to say, I, I believe a lot of you will be really surprised. We might have a very uh, cool guest joining us on Halloween. And if not, uh, I'll be talking to him about my book in Tampa Bay. Hi, Julie. Hey, can you hear me now? I, I, I don't hear you, but I see you. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. What? I'm going to watch the mother of all ignorance right now. Oh. My producer is going to kill me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> see, you guys got it live. Hey, babe. Oh, man, I'm sorry. I owe you big time. <laughs> Yes, I, dude, dude, I was doing everything. I'm like, I'm, I'm pushing. I'm like, okay, it's set to the right microphone. It's set to the right output. It's set to the right everything. And I'm going through all my settings and changing them up. I'm like, I restarted my computer, all of this shit and everything. Like, <laughs> I love it. This, it, this, this is hysterical because this is going to go down our first broadcast using all this new technology. And here we are. We're like. I mean, yeah, what? That was fun. I'm sorry. Anybody watching this? Uh, I see uh, Shanine Abigail. Wait, wait, wait. How are you doing? Wait, wait. Shannon. Good morning. Um, we're glad you're here, Shannon. We're both cracking up. My, my poor producer has just been put through hell because of my dumb ass. <laughs> Well, it wasn't connected. Your your headphones or your your. Uh, correct. I had you plugged into the monitor instead. I have to get a Y cable. So I'm. Okay, so why don't you try and get John back on the phone and let's go with this? Is that cool? Stop laughing for a second. Let me stop laughing. Oh, okay, okay. All right, guys, you've seen it first. This is a new experience, man. Oh my gosh, I am, I am totally. I want to add what makes this so funny is that because Neil and I have been working in 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 this industry our entire careers. <laughs> <laughs> so Ed, that's what makes it so funny because we're both completely perplexed and losing our shit. And what the fuck is happening? It's a bloody patch cord. I mean, really, I, this will go down with the show where I was playing records and singing along to them. People were just cracking up online, going, "What is this idiot doing?" I mean, now gosh. You know why, now you know why people say, "Is it plugged in?" Well, you know what? That's what I. We were sitting here. That light went on in my head. I don't know if you play it back. You can probably see me. I just went. Why is this not working? And then I went back to what Dan Mockenstern. When you see this, my old teacher at Full Sail, 
you know, I always remember from you, mate, check signal flow and things like that. So here we are going live. Everything we've been working, like, we get up early and work on this platform every day. This week. And they have no idea. They say, oh, your show sucks. Yeah, sometimes it does because we're just now getting going. And here we are. We've got this huge investment we've made. And I have to say, Julie, you handled this perfectly great under fire. You didn't lose your cool. I could see the desperation in your eyes, and I was just feeling bad. And I'm also, while I'm watching you and Pete, um, excuse me, John talking, uh, at any rate, um, why don't you see if we can get John on now, and let's just roll with this. Well, let me see. Hold on. I'm going to text him. And, um, okay. And, and thank you, John, for being a good sport. Uh, um, all right. Hold on. John Spear is with, he's a paranormal investigator with the Kinsey Paranormal Group. Um, most of us know as Kinsey is a sex doctor. Um, he had all kinds of fun stuff. He's like great a uh, pervert out there, but um, heck, I'm sure some good came out of his research. I know, I'm pretty sure he was amused at home. You can see Julie's now talking to Pete. Who's uh, Julie's in Tampa, Florida, and Pete is somewhere between Orlando and Alabama as we speak. Um, we're going to be talking to Pete about some of the things he had. Uh, how he's been called out to these paranormal investigations. And I'm going to try to ask some thought provoking uh, questions like, how do you get paid? Is it good? Is it good? Uh, the money. And can you do something with me? Um, you know, the bottom line is I'm, I've been called possessed by, I don't know, my ex wife or something, <clears throat> maybe a couple of bandmates. Um, I have, like I said earlier, if you want to be a sponsor of our show, um, you can uh, make your offer of Ask Neil Anything, or you can uh, send us money and ask us for me to do a specific uh, dumb human trick. Uh, nothing obscene, fattening, or well, a little bit of obscenity is okay. Um, at any rate, uh, I see... Julie's talking to our guest in beautiful Tampa, and he's probably, they're both sweltering. I have to say, I'm loving it. Um, I'm looking out the window. Somebody just plooped into the room. I believe it's Johnny. All right. How you doing, Johnny? Hey, can you hear me this time? Can you uh, hear bring me? Down a little bit, please. Oh, I hear you very well. You got to bring it down a little bit. You're killing me. <laughs> How about now? All right, how about that? Is that better? Yeah, if you can just turn it down a hair more, it'll be great. But, yes, you're very good. All right, how's that? That's good. Okay, everybody. Uh, here we are live with Neve, and I'm talking to Johnny Spear of Kinsey Paranormal. If you want to reach him, you can reach out to him at kinseyparanormal at yahoo.com. Where'd you go, oh, Neil? I'm here. Anyhow. Uh, so you can Why? turn your mic you you I hear you. So tell me, Johnny, how did you get into this line of work? Um, you need, you need, can you turn down your, your monitors and put on your headphones? So I'm hearing you echo, that's why, and for our listeners, that's got to get weird uh, fourth hand. Oh, Lord. I'm sorry, we're, we, uh, you're on the road, uh, John's a hardworking guy. Can you hear me okay? Okay, um, now I hear somebody calling in. Hey, hey, Julie, turn down your mic for a second. I'm gonna ramble, I'm gonna ramble for a minute. Uh, I think he's on the same line, Jules. I got it now. Hey, Johnny. Hello. Hello. Let's, hey, Johnny. Let's just have him on the 
Let's have him uh, talk over the phone. It works. I can see him. It'll record. He's getting. <laughs> uh, we're having. Uh, right now, if you think about the amazingness that we're broadcasting through satellite, and and as a result, it's going up to a satellite, beaming down to his truck. Uh, video, I'm learning as we go. Is, hey, Johnny, can you hear us? Hi, Johnny. Uh, hey, hey. Hey, listen. Can you hear me I, now? I do hear you now. How about um, you just go ahead and shut down? Um, you know, you just can talk over that okay. that phone because we can see you. So tell me, John, um, how did you get started in the paranormal? Um, tell us about some of your most recent um, jobs, if you will. Okay, well, I got started uh, way back in the 70s, because like all little children, you know, you see things in the dark, and there's things under your bed, and all this, that, and the other. Uh, I was born in New Orleans, Louisiana, so I grew up hearing about Marie Laveau, the famous voodoo witch, so I just got started following into her and all the magic and stuff that goes on in New Orleans. It just drew me in, and I've been into it for about 40 years now. Have, have you ever had it? Um, let me ask you, like, how does your family uh, react to your, your job? Um, do, do they support you, or they, do they think it's unusual? How, how does that work? Um, do they enjoy it? Do they? I, I'm just curious how you're, you're, you're yeah, received. Yeah, my wife, she goes with me on a lot of hunts. Uh, John Jr. used to go with me a lot. Uh, about, uh, I think it was six, seven years ago, we went to a graveyard in Alabama, and the local TV station from ABC came out with us and was filming us out there. And the uh, cameraman got so scared when he saw some of the phenomenon that he didn't come back the second night. The uh, TV personality had to run his own camera because his cameraman wouldn't come back with him. Well, so tell me, what what did you see manifested? Um, I mean, everybody thinks of a typical ghost. Is that the typical, like, is it like Ghostbusters or Caspers? Or what do they look like? I mean, how did we, how, what did he see that freaked him out is what I'm curious about. Uh, they, they look like they do before, you know, when they, uh, are living they look exactly the same they got the same personalities everything else what happened this night was uh it was so wind and uh, by one gravestone they had a confederate battle flag on it because it was in alabama it was just waving to beat the band and everybody agreed there was no wind so I went over there and I said, if this spirit's trying to communicate, make the flag stop. Flag instantly fell limp. Cameraman dropped the camera and left the graveyard. I, I, I think it would be great fun. I would terrorize him forever. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 if we were closer by, I'd love to come out with one of these with my own crew. And I can assure you, my crew has seen things that nobody's seen. And, uh, we aren't going to run, is my point. Right. That's what I hate about them reality TV shows. They're out there trying to hunt ghosts. As soon as something happens, they're like, oh, we need to leave or run or whatever. You know, mm -hmm. The TV shows, to me personally, they're just a joke. I wish they'd invite me on one of them. I'd show them how to ghost them. I'm, I'm curious. Um, how do people find you to... Uh, are you, is it word of mouth? Do you advertise? How does that work? That's mainly word of mouth. Uh, people I do jobs for, they tell their friends. And usually a haunting, you know, has been going on for years and years. So, you know, everybody knows about it. It doesn't just happen overnight. No do word of mouth gets around. Um, do, do, do you find that certain 
Have you ever gone out to one and you just determined you thought maybe the people were like out of their mind and they didn't have possession? They were just weird. Yeah, you, you, run, you run up on that. A lot of people yeah. bring you out just to make fun of you. You know, they know nothing's wow. going on. But they'll hide in the closet or something, trying to mess oh, with you. Man. Or whatever. What? That's just that's just part of it. You know, you got to take the good with the bad. But sure. I guarantee you, the paranormal is real. And one day, everybody's going to be a ghost because everybody going to die. I wonder if I if I come back. I wonder if I came back as a ghost. I have to tell you, it'd almost be fun. I, I have a lot of people I can just have fun with. I'm not a mean spirited ghost. I'm more of a smart ass ghost. Who, I don't know. I would probably try and annoy my family who lo I love very much, but I just do something that I used to do. And I, I, hang on, uh, our host, our producer Julie has a couple of questions for you. Julie, I'm sorry, I've been okay. rubbing my mouth. Come on, Borden. Oh, no, no, no. That's okay. You answered a lot of the questions I had. Um, uh, um, what was it that I was going to ask you? Now I forgot, John. Um, uh, ha well, have you, what are, have you experienced something really, I mean, there's no doubt in your mind that it is a spirit. Did you, have you experienced something so intensely, is I guess what I'm asking, that you, you just, it just blew your mind? Oh, yes, ma'am. That's why we're just now restarting with Ken Paranormal. We used to be a nationwide group called Southern Spirit Seekers, and we got involved in a full-blown demonic possession, and uh, three or four people, they still haven't got over it. And me and my wife, we stepped away from the paranormal for about eight years because of all the stuff that was happening to us because we got involved in that one case and now we feel like it's safe to come back but we're going to just start over with a new name and a new attitude about it i've been to school and studied demonology so now i know how to deal with demons plus poltergeist and normal everyday goes i believe we can handle it more now than we could eight nine years ago when we was just getting started sure sure uh, I, i'm curious have you um, when you've seen like what happened that time eight years ago um were you successful in getting rid of the spirit or the entity if you will Yes, we, we got rid of the entity, but it seemed to follow us, which we at that time we was young and wasn't really knowing what we was doing. You know, we was kind of playing like a lot of people do, and we didn't know how to protect ourselves at that time. So the entity latched on to all of us in the group, and how we you, finally how do you got rid of yourself? it. Well, you protect yourself with prayer, anoint yourself with uh, sage smoke before you go into these situations. I always have a bottle of holy water in my shirt pocket. I have a bottle of uh, olive oil from the Mount of Olives in Israel. And I got a cross made out of an olive tree from the uh, uh, Mount of Olives in Israel that was handmade special for me by monks over there so i'm pretty well protected wherever i go now may i ask you john now i know you do demonology as well you say you've been doing this for about 40 years have you ever run into uh the warrens or worked with them edit lorraine warren uh did you ever work with them run into them at all or no i've never never run into them personally but i'd have spoken to them and exchange letters with them and they're oh, one of my teachers that taught me some of the things that I needed to really learn especially about the demonic Ed Warren was a real great teacher and Lorraine Warren she was one of the sweetest women you'd ever meet but I never met them face to face but through letters and phone calls we got to be pretty close that's amazing. That's incredible. Congratulations. I'm so that's just, you know, I'm envious of that because I'm fans of theirs and uh, 
Um, you know, they just seem like really cool, really great people. Uh, you know, I, I watched the documentary with Lorraine um, and uh, uh, the youngest child from the Amityville Horror House talking about all of that. And they came in and tried to, you know, and, and right. clean, cleanse the house, all this stuff. I mean, it, they, you know, they both just seem like the kindest people and, and they work, you know, just wanted to uh, help keep people safe and in, in the, uh, I guess in a, in a heavenly place or a, you know, or a peaceful place, whatever you believe. Yeah, I'm curious, John. Have right. you, yeah, they were ahead. very down to earth people. Yeah. They never. Huh? No, it's okay. I'm sorry I interrupted. That's okay. Get, carry on. I, I missed I interrupted. Go ahead, John. Well, I was going to just say they was very down to earth people. They never defrauded anybody. They never charged anybody any money, and they always was there just specifically to help. There was no uh, gratitude or anything paid to them like some of these ghost hunters do. It was like our organization, totally free. We're there just to help, and that's the only reason they existed. That's the only reason we exist. Sure. And I understand, you know, everybody's got to make a living, too, on top of it. So, I mean, that's got to be difficult, but it's got to be, I mean, you know, God bless you for being able to, uh, you know, do, to offer your services for, 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 for free. I mean, that's, you know, that's wonderful. Has, has anyone ever given you, like have you ever had someone give you a good bonus for actually solving the case and, and just being so overwhelmed that they were generous? Uh, I've had a few offer, but we we have turned it down because wow. I figure if we take money one time, that's going to be used against us. Oh, you did that for this, 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 and this. Well, that's Our organization good. don't want to be known for that. We want to be known for helping people that's having spiritual problems and to make their lives easier and better. So what is, so aside from uh, some of the things you've shared, um, what other experiences have you had? And I know you said uh, New Orleans, you know, I'm a big fan. We, in fact, before the show, Neil and I were talking about New Orleans and, and uh, so uh, a couple of experiences I had over there. But uh, um, where else have you been? Have you, have you been to any of the, uh, um, I guess, some of these places, uh, like the haunted house in, uh, uh, gosh, what is it, Connecticut or wherever, that demon house? You know what I'm talking about. And the dude yeah. from, uh, um, what's his name from, uh, from uh, 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 Ghost Is it Beetlejuice? Go no, Ghost Adventures bought it. Uh, what's his name? You know who I'm talking about, John, right? You know what I'm talking the about? You talking about the Winchester house out in California? No, no, no. This one was like in Connecticut. It was called like the Demon House. The Ghost Adventures went there. And what's his name? I just had it. Uh, the, 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 they the, probably the saw their guy. tax bill. Well, yeah, the main guy bought the, the main guy, uh, Ghost uh, uh, Adventures, bought the house so they could, you know, constantly ex inspect oh, the yeah. Demon, demon, yeah, activity. The one Ed and Lorraine Warren did. They made the movie Haunted in Connecticut. No, I've never been to that maybe, house. Yeah, maybe that would maybe that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, so uh, uh, it, 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 that took my, makes my. As far as famous houses, I've been to the Myrtles Plantation in Louisiana. Yep. I, I'm curious. Have you ever the, uh, there... Whirly House in, uh, outside of? Go ahead, Neil. Go ahead, Neil. Uh, I'm curious. Have, have you ever just had a case that was so scary? And no, no, I hear you. Can you hear me now? Hello. My question is: Yeah. Have you ever had a house that was just yep. so difficult that you just hauled ass and said, "I can't do this. Uh, I'm I'm scared. I'm I'm fearful for my safety, and uh, I better get my wife and I out of here." John, did we no, not not at this point. We haven't. I'm more scared of people than I am ghosts. Like that picture I sent you the other day with that dagger that I found in the graveyard. The uh, right. only reason I didn't continue investigating the graveyard is I didn't know where the people that dropped that knife was. It wasn't because I was scared of the ghosts. I was scared of the people that dropped that dagger. 
one of these people that more in the dark, you know. But I, that's what I worry about. Is tell, people, tell us the know, story about their strange graveyard or something. I, I was just showing our viewers the knife what that you, you had found. The knife? Yes. Uh, why don't you tell them about that episode and what happened? Well, I was stopped for the night. I drive a truck, so I stopped at night. And, uh, I went. I found a graveyard. People said they had a lot of stuff happening out there, and I went out there and. I heard voices, and I was like, wow, I ain't even in the graveyard, and I'm already getting EVP. Come to turn out, it was a group can, of Can you explain people. what, what is an EVP? I don't know what they was doing, but when I walked up, dropped that knife and disappeared, I don't know if they was trying to do a sacrifice or whether they was going to cut themselves and do a blood ritual or what, but they dropped the knife and ran, so... I picked it up and just left with their knife so they couldn't come back and do what they was going to do. If they want the knife, they can come find me. Uh, uh, when, uh, when you were there... Um, yeah, lose you again, Neil. Uh, for a minute there, I, I couldn't hear. I was having a little breakup on my end, but... When when you went there that night, uh, can you can you maybe explain it once again? I, I I understand that you heard some noise and then found the knife that we show have shown. Yeah, I walked up and they was standing by a tombstone. They had a pentagram drawn on the ground. It was burning black candles around the pentagram, but for some reason. Either I scared them or they was nervous or whatever, but they dropped the knife and left. So hmm. I just knocked their candles over and took the knife and I left so they couldn't come back and complete the ritual or whatever they was trying to do. Wow. I know I, know I lived in Florida knife. and there's a lot. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. No, I just, I just said I still have the knife, and it's going to go in my collection at the house of objects that I've found during paranormal activity places I've been to. Mm -hmm. Now, do you, do you keep those in a sacred uh, or a safe spot like um, uh, uh, the haunted objects guy who is also connected to Lorraine and Ed Warren? And and like they have their own, I know they have a secret room or not secret room, but a room they, that they keep all their haunted items in. Do you do the same thing? Yeah, we uh, keep them in a specific closet. And every time I go home, we bless the closet and anoint it with holy water. So to protect everything in there. And we never touch it with our skin. We either wear rubber gloves or wrap it in a handkerchief. So we're not allowing anything to come off of that object and to actually touch our skins where it can attach to us. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So how many objects do you think you have so far? Do you know? I mean, are uh, well right now, since we're just getting started, we only have three objects right now. Oh. I, sent, I sent Neil a video of us burning one of them because it was right. uh, wallet and it was made out of actual human skin so we oh. we destroyed it good for you that was a good and, and how, how did, what tell us the circumstances in this case uh, okay uh, this lady just it just happened to be my daughter but i won't name her because everybody know which daughter i got several <laughs> and uh she moved into a house and the owner left a box in the house and she called him and told him he said no i don't want i don't want it do something with it throw it away and she kept seeing stuff coming in and out of that closet and at night it, she said somebody would stand over her bed and uh feel like she was suffocating so i i was on the road and i said well it's something small and it's in that closet she knew exactly what I was talking about. And we went and we found two documents that were signed in blood. And then they was put inside the uh, wallet, which 
was made Any money? again. So we took them out in her driveway, burn them. Uh, was there any money in it? No, no, it's just a wallet to protect them papers. And hey, hey, what about? I mean, would you actually take money from a ha haunted wallet? I mean, that kind of seems like you're asking for trouble. <laughs> you know, I've always been asking for trouble, Julie. Yeah, we've been. <laughs> yeah, Neil acts like he's that type of person that you got to keep an eye on. <laughs> Well, it's been said by, I think my ex-wife is convinced that I'm him. possessed. Uh, you, it could be my, possible. I'll, I'll come by and take care of it for you if you want me to. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'll tell you what, next time I'm down, I might come by and uh, do it. <laughs> I, you never know. My ex-wife, she swears I was possessed, but, you know, I think the devil got into her a little bit, too. At least when I first knew her. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, I we, That's I nice. She'll day. come back and get you. That's good. Well, uh, do you have any? Uh, do you have any plans coming up with Halloween? Is that a particularly busy period of the year for you guys? Yes, it, it gets it gets pretty hectic around Halloween. It seems like that's the only time anybody thinks about ghosts and stuff like that. But they're there all the time. You know, it doesn't have to be on Halloween. Halloween's more about witches than it is about ghosts. But mm. people connect the two together. But you can find a ghost anytime, any place. Yeah, it's uh, from what my, you know. My research. I'm a huge paranormal person, uh, but yet you know, I found that uh, um, during Halloween because it's uh, uh, how. Uh, October 31st is exactly six months from spring. And so when the, uh, and as Celtics believed in everything like that, then that kind of, you know, the, uh, the, um, the veil between our world and the spirit world is, uh, is thinner on Halloween. And, and that, that's why it becomes more of a sacred holiday where people, you know, not, not, like yourself and other people who are amateurs who go out and try to, um, uh, uh, you know, do their own ghost hunting and get their own EVPs, which are voice phenomenon, electronic right. voice phenomenon, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, um, have you, have you ever heard phenomenon. I'm sorry, say that again. I'm, I was, I was going to ask you, I'm sorry, I cut you off. Oh, it's called electric voice phenomenon. Nons, one EVP stands for because they oh. usually speak in such a higher tone only uh, the recorder can pick it up the human ear can't pick it up sort of like a dog whistle you know uh, tell me like do you know what frequencies those are I, I'm I'm pretty well versed in the physics of sound can you have you ever actually heard a ghost manifest itself in a we all have this image on television of yeah. this Demonic possession, but is it like that, or is it more subtle? Is it? Yeah. It's usually a light whisper, sort of, and usually you have to, you know, have your earbuds in and all that. But they got a thing called a ghost box. I was just going to ask about that. Did you? Do you have a spirit box? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, spirit box is basically a radio that changes frequency just as fast as it can change frequency. And when it picks up a uh, ghost voice, it stops on that frequency and you can hear the ghost talk to the speaker. But I'd prefer to record it. That way, I, you know, I still got it on tape most of the ghost boxes you hear it and that's it you can't save it or download uh, what, it or record it or anything what if you were to slow it down if we played it back would it have some message to it some do some some don't you know some of them's just one or two words because they have to have energy to manifest so they get their energy from your batteries on all the equipment you bring in. And if people's fearful, they feed off of that fear. 
but they can't just manifest to manifest. They have to actually have a energy conduit to grab a hold to to get the energy to appear. Um, what is the difference between a ghost and a poltergeist? I would assume just being a layman that a ghost uh, – is, or a poltergeist is sort of an invisible ghost that likes to throw shit around. Yeah, uh, the word poltergeist is a German word that stands for noisy ghost. Mm -hmm. They usually are not really per se a ghost. They're actually emotions from people coming into puberty when all your hormones is all messed up and this, that, and the other. And when these people get mad and, you know, be like, oh, I could just do this, 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 and this, the energy from their mind is what actually moves that object or throws that object around. And usually when they go out, grow up and they're past puberty, the poltergeist will usually disappear because they no longer can feed off of that teenager's emotion. Right. Well, I know when I was a teenager, I had all kinds of bad spirits following me around. I was in all kinds of trouble. I once got paddled. In a, I got paddled in school. I grew up in New England boarding school. And when I went down south my last year, I'm sure that the, uh, the, the dean who paddled me, um, he knew I had the devil in him. And I didn't believe that when you get a paddling that it would be anything much. I will assure you that was the last time anybody's ever paddled me unless I asked for it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know he, the he, feeling. He, he sat me down on the desk and said, what do you want, three days or three licks? And I said, well, I'll take three licks. That sounds pretty good. Apparently, he didn't find my sense of humor very good. And being a kid from New York in uh, Plant City, Florida, he found my sense of humor not um, very funny. But um, it's interesting I... to me. Go ahead. Do you Have you had a paddle? Oh, yeah, I was raised real good by the Board of Education. Oh, my guy had whiff he had holes drilled in it. I think he beat the yep. spirit out of me that day. <laughs> yeah, we had uh, people walk the halls where I grew up in South Mississippi back in the 60s and 70s. They, they put it on you. But by them doing that, we also went to school with rifles and shotguns in our pickup trucks, and mm -hmm. nobody pulled them out and shot nobody. Yeah, it was definitely a different time then. Um, I'm curious, is, is, it a, is there any way to physically, for somebody who's being menaced by a ghost, if they don't have your services, what would you recommend them to do? Well, they could. you can smudge your own house. Uh, which you just get white sage. You can order it off the internet at whichever place you want to order it, and you just walk around. And whatever right. your belief is, you pray in your belief while you uh, let the smoke drift around the room, but leave a window or a door open, and the spirit will usually leave through the open entry that you leave for them to leave by. Interesting. Um, boy, I probably need a bunch of saging in my car. I jokingly say that because I get in trouble all the time driving too fast. I, I'm, I'm just joking with you. You know, in, in all seriousness, um, what happens to somebody who's just tried all these things and they don't know how to get a hold of you? Like, hey, have, have you had cases where people call you just terrified? Yeah. Uh we had one woman, somebody told her where I live at, and I swear I thought she was going to break down the door trying to get into my house at 2 o'clock in the morning. But we went over there, and she had a mess. She actually had a demon in her house. And we exercised the house, which only made it worse because it didn't. we didn't know we did, didn't do a full exorcism. So we came back again and did a second exorcism and found uh, what was causing the problem. Her daughter had a Ouija board between her mattress and box spring. And when we removed the Ouija board from the house, all activity quit. Hmm. Um, what would they do with a typical uh, with a Ouija board? Uh, what, what's up with that thing? 
it's uh, a board where you can communicate with spirits, but nine times out of ten, the spirit you're communicating with is not who you think it is. It's actually a demonic entity that's trying to fool you and get you to invite them into your life. And once you give them permission to come into your life, you've opened the door and they can legally walk in. Well, well, I've always had an open door policy in my house that may explain things. <laughs>